Now on BBC One, the start of a new drama serial for Sunday evenings. Patrick Malahide and Rosalie Crutchley star in The Franchise Affair. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Top. where's that damn file? I beg your pardon, Miss Bennett. Which file was that? The Calthorpe transfer. I asked for the papers an hour ago. Miss Tuff? The relevant documents are in Mr. Roberts' in tray. Sometimes I wonder if that woman was actually born like the rest of us. I think she was knitted by the Ministry of Labour. She could have told me an hour ago that you had the wretched file, but oh no, not our Tuffy. Neville. Hmm. Do you feel that you've been left out? Of what? Life. What's going on out there? Can't say I do, old chap. What? Don't you ever feel this is it? This is all you're ever going to have? This? That? Dearie me, what brought this on? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I need a holiday. You need a holiday, Robert. Aha. Wills, conveyancing, investments, more wills. What happened to life? The most exciting thing I've done since VE Day is fall off a horse. Well, at least we got through it in one piece, old man. It's the inevitability of it all. Even down to Miss Tuff's biscuit routine. Have you ever noticed? Digestive Tuesday and Thursday, ginger Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Never varies. Summer or winter, hell or high water. You seem a bit put out. Why don't you call it a day? Don't be ridiculous, Neville. It's only four o'clock. Good oh, Lord, Robert.
senior partners, old chap, can do what they like. Impudent lackey. I don't understand where she's got to. It's only ten minutes' walk from the school. Mrs. Wynn, I don't want to keep on at a subject which must be unpleasant for you. But has Betty spoken any more about the weeks she was missing? Why, Betty? How can anyone be so cruel? That's her heart. Ah. Love. Don't start, Mum. Inspector Grant's been waiting such a long time. She doesn't want to go. Dear love, I'm afraid I have to insist that she does. Can't you make an arrest without her? The poor kid's scared stiff. You've no need to be frightened, Betty. I'll be there with you. How do you expect her to feel going into that house again? She says she won't, unless I go too. Betty? Does she really have to do this? I'm afraid so, yes. She's made a very serious accusation. Bloody right it's serious. Sleep. I'm afraid this business has got him all worked up so he can't think straight. They must be mad who beat her up. You didn't see her that night. Her face all swollen and covered in blood. You think she made that up? Yes, I have seen the doctor's report. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Wynne, we really should be going if you want Betty home before dark. All right, love. Don't yeah. worry. Mrs. Scott here will look after her. But what about a tea? I'll make sure she gets a sandwich at the Milford station. What are you staring at, you nosy old cow? Bennett, Robert Blair speaking. I'm so glad to have caught you, Mr. Blair. I thought you might have gone for the day. My name's Sharp, Marion Sharp. I'd rather not explain over the telephone what's happened, but I'm afraid I'm in trouble and I need a lawyer. I mean, I need one now, this minute. Will you come, Mr. Blair? I'd be so grateful. my mother and the franchise. I'm sure you know the place, about a mile out of Milford on the Larborough Road.
Blair. I'm Marion Sharp. Good afternoon. Come in, please. I'm afraid I left the gates open. I hope that's all right. Thank you so much for coming. I'm more grateful than I can say. Inspector Hallam gave me your name. We haven't been in Milford very long, you see. Well, I know you and your mother by sight. Or at least that splendid car of yours. The police are in here. I take it it's nothing to do with your car. When people say they're in trouble in Milford, it generally means one of two things. Either an affiliation order or an offence against the traffic laws. I doubt if Scotland Yard are terribly interested in minor traffic offences. Scotland Yard? I haven't murdered anyone, if that's what you're thinking. Uh, the point is, are you supposed to have murdered someone? I'm supposed to have kidnapped someone. You know Inspector Hallam, of course. John. And this is Detective Inspector Grant. Glad you could come, Mr. Blair. Couldn't very well proceed until Miss Sharp had some kind of support. Is there to be a charge, Inspector? I'm supposed to have abducted and beaten up someone. Beaten her black and blue, apparently. Beaten her? That girl sitting outside in the car. Perhaps I'd better do the explaining, Miss Sharp. Yes, do. After all, it's your story. Sit down, Mr. Blair. Will your mother be joining us? I hope not. But she lies down in the afternoon. I'm hoping we can get this whole business over and done with before she wakes up. <coughs> yes. Just before Easter, Mr. Blair, a 15-year-old schoolgirl called Elizabeth Kane, who lives near Birmingham, went to spend a short holiday with a married aunt who lives in Larborough. And she went by coach because they passed right through Larborough and she'd be within a few minutes' walk of her aunt's house when she got off. After she'd been with her aunt for a week, Mrs. Wynne received a postcard from the girl. Mrs. Wynne? The girl's parents were killed in an air raid in 43. Mrs. Wynne's a legal guardian. Now, in this postcard, the girl said she was having a lovely time and was going to stay on with her aunts for a bit. When she hadn't arrived home the day before she was due back at school, Mrs. Wynne telegraphed to find out what was going on. She learned that Elizabeth had stayed on in Larborough for only three days after sending that card. Her aunt had seen her off at the coach stop on her way home two weeks previously. It's on the 28th of March. Mrs. Wynne went straight to the police, of course, but given the time it took for the telegrams to go back and forth, it was almost three weeks before anyone realised anything was wrong. But then one night she turned up, suddenly, late at night on the doorstep, in a terrible state. 20th of April. And I mean terrible, Mr. Blair. Some of the bruises were still visible much later when she made her statement to me. That child had been very extensively knocked about. It was a week before the police had a full statement from her. To begin with, all they could get was that she'd been kidnapped. She was completely hysterical. From where had she been kidnapped? The coach stop. I thought you said her aunt put her onto the coach. No, only to the stop. The coach was late. The suggestion is, Mr. Blair, that my mother and I enticed a schoolgirl into our car and then into this house, and that we beat her almost senseless every time she tried to escape. If you don't mind, Miss Sharp. Do you wonder that I wanted help in a hurry? The girl says in her statement that while she waited at the coach stop, it started to get dark and then to rain. The coach was very late, or at least that's what she thought. Then a car pulled up on the curb. First, she could only see the driver, a woman wearing a bright silk scarf round her neck. She asked the girl if she wanted a lift. The woman told her that the Birmingham coach had already gone, but she could get another from Mains Hill in about 40 minutes. She was very grateful for the offer of a lift and got in beside an older woman in the back. Very little was said on the journey. The older woman never spoke at all. 
It wasn't until the car suddenly left the main road that the girl realized they were no longer heading towards Mains Hill. The younger woman told her she still had plenty of time before the coach left. Enough time for a cup of tea. Soon after that, they pulled off the road. The younger woman got out and opened some large iron gates. Then the car was driven up a drive to the house. It was too dark for her to see what it looked like. They went through a hallway first, and then into a large kitchen where the younger woman made her a cup of coffee, not tea. Is it difficult to entice anyone? While the girl drank coffee, which she didn't like, the younger woman apologized for the state of the kitchen and told her that they had no maid to help them. She asked the girl if she was looking for a job. The girl said she wasn't. She doesn't remember much after that until she woke up in the attic. She remembers both women dragging her up a flight of carpeted stairs. And then a second flight with something hard underfoot. When she woke up, she found herself lying on a bed in a room with a round window which wouldn't open. The door was locked. She had been kept prisoner, Mr. Blair, for over three weeks and repeatedly beaten by both women or deprived of food if she refused to mend the linen they brought her. I know domestic help is scarce nowadays, but that is ridiculous. There's no end to the extravagances of human conduct, Mr. Blair. To enlist a servant by forcibly detaining her, Inspector, to say nothing of starving and beating, and no one is going to be that absurd. No normal person, certainly. Perhaps Miss Sharp can provide an alibi for the 28th of March? No, of course I can't. days here hardly vary at all. I couldn't possibly remember what I was doing six weeks ago. Could you? Yes. How did the girl escape? She tried to get out of the roof at first, but they caught her breaking the window and beat her almost senseless. Then she noticed that they always left the key in the lock. And one night she managed to poke it out with a pencil and pull it back under the door on a piece of paper. How resourceful. And when she got out of the house, she just ran. She was picked up semi-conscious on the Birmingham Mainzel Road. And her suitcase? Never saw it again. Three strange men. How extravagant, my dear. Would you present them to me, please? This gentleman is Detective Inspector Grant from Scotland Yard. Inspector Hallam from Milford, and this is Mr. Blair from Blair, Haywood and Bennett. Blair, Haywood and Bennett? So you occupy that lovely house in Milford High Street? Uh, part of it, yes. It needs retiling. Yes, I'm afraid it does. This is difficult to explain quickly, but I'll try. The police have brought a young girl here. You shouldn't be sitting in that chair. You're much too heavy for it. Hallam, uh, since you're up, perhaps you would um, 
Yes, excuse me. There's a schoolgirl waiting in a car outside. She was missing from home last month. She told the police that she was locked up in an attic by two women who beat her and starved her. I see. And was she referring to us? I'm afraid we seem to fit the description. So does the house. She described the house quite minutely, Mrs. Sharp. And the occupant. How remarkable. And what did we beat her with? A silver-topped cane and a dog lead. We have no dog, Inspector. I take it you brought this person here so that she may identify us as the people that held her prisoner. Have you any objections, Mrs. Sharp? On the contrary, Inspector. I look forward to the meeting with impatience. It's not every afternoon I go to my rest a dull old woman and rise a potential monster. Can you imagine a more nightmare piece of nonsense? Believe me, Miss Sharp, I've come across many stories much more incredible. You have my sympathy, young man. Why is that, Mrs. Sharp? Well, I imagine criminal lunacy is a little out of your line. Oh, really, Mother? Just a little. However, the distractions of Milford are pretty mild. I find all this uh, very stimulating. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, have you ever seen either of these women before? Yes, these are the women. I have never, to my knowledge, seen this girl before. I did not give her a lift anywhere on any occasion. She wasn't brought into this house either by me or by my mother, nor was she kept here. Mrs. Sharp? The two people on beating terms were distressingly ill-acquainted. It's understood then, Mrs. Sharp, that you also deny Miss Kane's story? Yes. Miss Kane, this is a very grave accusation. If you have any doubt, any doubt at all, you must say so now. Are these the two women who detained you, took your clothes from you, forced you to mend linen, starved you and beat you? Yes. Is the girl a virgin? Mrs. Sharp, I do not think that's relevant. Well, I do. If I'd been missing from my home for any length of time, it's the first thing my mother would have wanted to know about me. Inspector Grant, are we to be arrested now that this girl's identified us? Certainly not. No, things are a long way from that. And what do you propose to do? To go around this house so that Miss Kane's various descriptions of the rooms she says she was taken to can be verified. If they are, I report to my superior and he decides in conference what further steps to take. It's an admirable caution, Inspector. Now, if you'll excuse me, I shall go back to my interrupted rest. Don't you wish to be present when we go around your house? Oh, dear, no, I've not the slightest doubt Miss Kane will identify our attic. I should be surprised beyond words if she failed to do so. She's already proved herself a most remarkable liar. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Blair. I do hope you continue to find a stimulating. I take it you have no objection to letting Miss Kane see the relevant parts of your house? No, of course not. Uh, the car? Oh, yes. The car's in the garage at the back of the house. Shall we, then? <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Next week at the same time, 5.55.